Hey guys, it's Dave from GuitarBreakdown.com, and today I'm going to try and discuss some Alan Holdsworth stuff. Uh, we've had quite a few requests to do lessons on uh, his technique and some of his songs. Um, he's a difficult player to teach. He's a difficult player to play and transcribe. Um, he's extremely unique. If you're watching this, you know what he's all about as far as uh, who he is and what he does. But he is one of the most unique guitar players as far as the way he thinks and plays. Uh, he, his chord voicings are amazing. His hands are gigantic. So half the stuff that you hear, it's pretty difficult to play for most people, um, myself included, because uh, I have little baby hands compared to him. Um, but so a lot of times you have to do some cheats to play exactly what he plays as far as uh, w when you voice the chords, you might have to use two hands. Um, to play some of those wide intervallic lifts, you might have to tap or something like that. Um, there's ways of getting around it, but it's it's the general concept of what he does is just amazing, and you can always incorporate some things that he does into your own playing. So that's what we're going to try and do today. Um, we're going to start out actually uh, with something that's, if anything, simple with Alan Holdsworth, which there really isn't. Uh, this is a light introduction to what he does. Um, there's a cool, uh, you know, intervallic lick uh, that's a pretty wide stretch. Um, not terribly wide, though. Uh, and he, uh, some of the chord voicings, I'm going to show you a few chords, but not any crazy chord voicings. We're going to save that for another lesson. We're going to do uh, an entire lesson on, on his uh, style of chord voicings and the way he thinks. But anyway, to, to get to the point, this uh, this is based off of uh, an REH video, instructional video, that he put out probably in the early 90s. Um, and I remember when it first came out, a uh, little story that, uh, you know, everybody was so excited for this to come out because at the time there was no U YouTube. There was the only way to actually see what he was doing was if you went to one of his shows and he didn't, you know, come around a lot. Um and his his playing style was hard to transcribe because just listening to it on tape or CD was it, it was just so hard to figure out what he was doing because things were just these wide intervals that you couldn't imagine playing. Uh, so when he came out with the instructional tape, it was eye opening to say the least. Um, some people didn't like the video uh, because it was it wasn't at the time like Paul Gilbert and all those guys were coming out with instruction tapes and a lot of them were lick based tapes. Uh, this was not that. Uh, I would highly recommend, if it's still available, to pick this up because it has uh, a ton of cool information. Um, but beware that it, he goes over like the scales he uses by basically showing you a chart of every fret on the neck with dots on it everywhere and says this is scale one, this is scale two. So uh, to dive into that is cool, but to just think you're going to come out of it with a lick... Um, is definitely not what that uh, video was intended for, but it's an extremely educational video uh, series or videotape. So uh, I would suggest picking that up if you can. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down the solo in a song he plays on this called um, "The Things You See." Uh, it is. Uh, I'm just gonna do the very beginning of it, the first maybe six or seven bars. Uh, it's very rhythmic. And uh, it's very typical of uh, his melodic style of playing. Uh, he's playing over some basic chords. I mean, they're, they're, there's extensions to them and everything, but in theory, they're basic chords. And he's using some basic scales, really basic scales, things that you guys probably already know. But it's the way he phrases uh, that, is, that makes this just sound, to me, so cool. This is one of my favorite... When, when I saw this video, when I heard this little melodic phrase line and then the intervallic lick, I was just blown away and I was like, I got to learn this. So um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I'm going to try and make this kind of quick, maybe a two part lesson. And uh, we're going to dive into a bunch more of his stuff. Now, I am not. Alan Holdsworth is definitely one of the guitar players that I have a very difficult time emulating. Um, but it's not to say that it's not fun trying. So. Uh, excuse the mistakes, and I'm definitely not trying to be Alan Holdsworth. Never will be, never can be. 
Um, but I hope you get something out of this and you know, hope you enjoy. So we'll start the lesson with uh, some basic chord things. Okay, thanks. Hey guys, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to start out discussing the chords um, mm -hmm. that he's playing underneath this solo. Uh, I'm, I'll go over a few inversions. I'm not going to, like I said, get into um, his, his crazy chord voicings and stuff. Um, that wasn't kind of the purpose of this lesson. So uh, I'll try and blow through this pretty quickly. Um, but anyway, so the, let, me, let me go through the, the progression first. It's, it starts out in A flat major uh, with an A flat major seven chord. And it does that for two, bar, two measures. Then it goes to a D flat major seven chord for one measure. Everything else after this is one measure. Uh, then it goes to a D flat uh, minor seven chord. To an A flat minor seven chord, then to kind of a strange chord that some might find interesting, uh, an A minor major seven chord, to an F major seven chord, and then it finishes on an E uh, nine sharp eleven chord. An E major nine sharp eleven chord. So anyway, those are the chords. Let me uh, just show you a few inversions of how you could play this. Uh, again, this this is less of an Alan Holdsworth chord lesson, um, and I, I just want to show some people that might not be familiar with those chords um, some choices. So the A major seven chord, a typical grab for this, or A flat major seven chord, is your first finger on the fourth fret. Uh, uh, of the E string, skip the A string, third finger on the fifth fret of the D string, fourth finger, your pinky on the fifth fret of the G string, and your second finger on the fourth fret of the B string. And that's a real typical uh, first A major seven chord, or A flat major seven chord. And I, I say A major because a lot of times you learn in either A or E um, these chords, and these are all movable, just like a regular bar chord, E major. You can do that with this A major 7 down to A flat major 7, to D flat major 7. You know, it's just the same shape moving around. Um, so that A flat major 7, you could also play it up here where the root is, that was the root on the low E string. This is with the root on the A string. So you don't play the E string, uh, and your first finger is on the 11th fret of the D string, uh, or I'm sorry, the 11th fret of the A, A string. Third finger is on the 13th fret of the D string. Second finger, 12th fret of the G string. And fourth finger on the 13th fret of the B string. Again, that's a really typical, and you could even bar and put your first finger on that 11th fret of the E string. So you could have, it's a very standard uh, grab for a, a basic major seven chord. Um, and if you look at it, it's actually this D, it's really a major chord, a typical bar major chord, but you drop that G string down a half step. And that's where you're getting you're going from the root to the major seven. So those are two choices uh, for this first chord, the A major seven chord. Uh, you can go a little outside that. Instead of doing A major seven, you could do an A major nine, which this shape is kind of like, again, this is a standard major ninth shape. Uh, it's like a triangle kind of thing. So you have your second finger on the 11th fret A string, first finger on the um, 10th fret of the D string, then you have your pinky on the 12th fret of the G string, and you have your your third finger on the 11th fret of the B string. So, and again, you can bar that if you want, if you want to get that note in there. Um, but it just makes a, a little triangle, and you can again move this around anywhere you want. And wherever your your second finger is on that A string, that's the root of the chord. So basically, you're playing the root, the major third, 
the major seven, and then you have your ninth there. Um, so those are three different choices for that A major seven chord. And since there's a few major seventh chords in this, we'll, we'll be using them a few different times. So after that A major seven, we go to a D, uh, I'm sorry, an A flat major seven. We go to a D flat major seven. And again, here you could use this shape, this A flat major seven, move it up to the ninth fret. You have your D flat major seven. Or you could use these shapes that you were using and move them down to the fourth fret. Uh, and you have, that's your D major seven or your D major nine. So again, uh, the first two bars are A major 7 to a D flat, uh, I'm sorry, I think I keep saying A major, <laughs> that's A flat major 7 to a D flat major 7. Um, and then it goes to a D flat minor 7. I'm sure a lot of you know it's it's kind of like a regular bar minor chord but you take off these fingers and you're just barring that whole fret and you don't play the uh, the a string so a typical way to grab that is your second finger on the ninth fret of the e string skip the a string and with your third finger just bar the other four strings so it's all the ninth fret again if you want to play that in e put up here down to the fifth fret. So uh, it's a, the, this progression goes A flat major seven, two bars to one bar of D flat major seven, one bar of D flat minor seven, then to an A flat minor seven. And again, this could be. Uh, if you want to do the, the bar thing, uh, bring this D flat minor chord down to here to the fourth fret, and you have your minor chord. Uh, or you could play it up here on the 11th fret. I know I'm going through a lot of this quickly, but uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this. I just want to give you a basis of it. Um, so another grab for this minor chord is the same as, again, your typical mi A minor chord. And you just lift your uh, third finger up, which is a typical A minor 7 kind of thing. Well, if you move that up with the bar down here, you move it all the way up to the 11th fret. And if you want, you could add your pinky on the 14th fret. That's your A minor, A flat minor 7. Through this whole thing, I'll keep saying A minor, or, or A. Then he moves up to A from A flat minor 7 to an A major, uh, or I'm sorry, to an A minor major 7th chord. So what that is, it's really, it's a minor chord with a major 7th, which is really kind of strange sounding, um, but a, a, a decent, simple voicing of that would be uh, open A string, or you can play the 12th on the A, a string. Um, and then the 14th fret on both the D and the G string. Then the 13th fret with your first finger on the uh, B string. And then your fourth finger will grab the, the major 7th of the chord on the 16th fret of the E string. So that's... Now you can either bar those two 14th frets on the D and G string with your second finger, or you could try and use your second and third finger. But things kind of get a little crowded up there. Uh, another cool voicing, or another easy voicing of that chord, would be, again, an open A string. Uh, your second finger on the sixth fret of the uh, D string. Then you can bar the fifth fret with your first finger on the G, B, and uh, E string. And actually on the E string, you're going to use your pinky on the eighth fret of the E string. So it's... And that's basically putting the minor third on 
on top instead of this one, which has that major seventh on top. It's just a cool, strange kind of chord. All right, so after that uh, A major, A minor major seven chord, it goes to an F sharp major seven chord. And again, you could play that the same as uh, uh, you did that first A major seven chord. You could go and it just, or A flat major seven chord. Just move it down a whole step to the ninth fret. You can play the, the ninth chord there too. Uh, or you could play that uh, D flat chord, A flat chord, down to F sharp on the second fret. So you have three different versions you can use throughout all this whole thing. Uh, so again, he goes from A, uh, A flat minor 7 to A minor 7 major, uh, I'm sorry, A minor major 7th to an F sharp major 7. And then the last chord he ends on with a an E uh, major 9 sharp 11. And a cool voicing for that, pretty simple grab, uh, is uh, you play the low E note, you skip the A string, and you play the second finger on the 6th fret D string, uh, first finger on the 4th fret of the G string, then the pinky on the 7th fret of the B string, and the 3rd finger on the 6th fret of the E string. It's a nice open chord. What that gives you, it gives you your your root, obviously, uh, your major third, your fifth, um, and your uh, ninth, and then your sharp eleven, which is really a flat five or a sharp four. So, so that's the whole chord progression. Um, and again, the first two measures are the A flat major seven, and all the other chords. Uh, all have one measure for themselves. Uh, so I hope you got something out of that as far as uh, try and, you know, get those chords down if you're not used to them and be able to switch them. Um, and uh, the more you practice it, practice with a metronome, really try and get that switch to happen uh, so your fingers get used to going around. Because when you get, when we get into the chord lesson eventually uh, for Alan Holdsworth, some of those chords are just crazy and to switch them I actually a lot of people sit there with a metronome and they try and you know switch one chord per beat kind of thing so that you can really get the dexterity in your fingers because there's some kind of weird fingerings and voicings uh, anyway I hope you enjoyed that let's get uh move on to what most of you are hopefully looking forward to which is a solo section thanks <laughs>